Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. Be sure to subscribe so we can get you these messages every single week. Have a great day. Welcome to the Family Room. Welcome to another wonderful Wednesday out in the Family Room. Uh, let us know where you're watching <laughs> while, uh, <laughs> while we get started. Uh, we're giggling because we are unfortunately not completely live today. The I see that comment. Thank you. I love that. Glad yes, to have you here. Good to see you all. Thanks for stopping in. This is uh, actually a pre-recorded one here um, because I am on vacation by the time that this airs. You Come know, on. Prepping for, for Sunday morning. But um, we are here to discuss... It's never Sunday's a bad thing message. to be on vacation. You know, it's one of the things that people always... I once, years ago, was uh, friends with a pastor, and I heard him uh, one day on stage. He said, I, he said it like he was bragging. He said, I haven't had a vacation in 43 years. That sounds miserable. And the crowd cheered, and I said, you need <laughs> to take some time You've off. You've got to be burnt out. You've got to have some <laughs> freshness you are close. there. So... I applaud anytime somebody takes a couple of days off to get some rest. We we do it in little bursts like that. Yeah, and it's so it's nice. a good thing. Y'all have a good time. I'm sure you're going to. But this is pre-recorded through the wonders of technology. I'm so it sure is Wednesday as, as you this tune time in. Time is going. I'm sure I'm having a blast. Me too. I'll speak that in faith. But uh, real quick, we'll get the announcements out of the way. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Yeah, tomorrow night. Queenie is going to be doing the. Uh, Ladies group, ladies fellowship. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. 6.30 p.m. in the off. event room. Don't miss that. All ladies are invited to come be a part of that. It's going to be great. You threw me off. Uh, yeah, without wavering, mom's new class. Mm-hmm. Um, is there a book on that that they need to get? There is a book, but Kathy said that you don't necessarily need it. Without wavering, you can find it on Amazon, but you don't necessarily need it. The first week, the 19th, Tuesday the 19th, it is going to be a meet and greet. So they're oh, going to just be meeting and talking and getting everything set in order. So... Amazon works fast. You can usually get something in two or three days from Amazon. Sometimes you can get it the next day. I've done that. We've ordered now stuff also, and it's came the next here's day. Here's something that's, that's hot off the press. You know, we had our men's fam group Sunday night. Yep. Uh, Sunday night, the men's, if you are watching this and you're not a part of the men's group, if you would uh, get on our app and click on the groups and send me a, a join uh, invite, I will be happy to let you in there. Uh, but we had a meeting on Sunday night, and the guys have told me that they've been working on a study, The Men We Need. That's awesome. It was on the uh, Love Like You Mean It cruise, and it was a segment that they did, and Joe Costello and Rick Arsenault are going to be heading that up. That's going to also start on the 19th. Oh, we're just starting everything up. Right. It's so small group season year. is Fam back. groups getting going. It'll be here on the 19th. The men, I believe, are going to be in the sanctuary. You don't have to have the book, but if you would like to get the book, it is available on Amazon. We will put it on our, our webpage for you and all of that. But it also has an audio version. That's cool. I do have yeah. a couple audio books, and it's nice. So you can get it all on audio. Going. You don't have to do any of that other stuff. Yeah, that is nice. That is nice. Uh, April 4th is the next Dining with Dignity, and our next baptism is Sunday, April 7th. We're going to be watching the weather, and if it's really good weather, we may set up a little baptismal pool right out front of the building. We've got to get so. one. We need to have a baptismal fund. Um for the one that I want to get. They're not crazy expensive, but it is one that I would like to have, especially after watching um, the Elevation on their anniversary Sunday. They did mm-hmm. baptisms at all the locations, but they did one in-house while they played More Than Able, mm-hmm. and it was like super powerful. It was, you know, I every mean, time you we've ever done it baptism in the, in the is building, great, but then special. while the music and everything, it was a very special moment. Yeah. Holly was doing it. She was crying. It was awesome. It's super. Awesome. God is just awesome. And I see we have a, a baby dedication on April 14th. We Coming up, that everybody who has a baby. <laughs> <laughs> everybody has a baby. Have had a baby, have have a baby. Uh, a baby dedication. That Sunday, what is it? August 14th. Or, April the 14th. Yeah. Um, we will have a sign-up sheet available and all that, but on that date, we'll do them all at one time. Uh, it's a very special thing, Psalms 127, uh, dedicating children and families to to God. It's going to be a, a good Sunday. We haven't done one in a little while. No, I don't remember the last one that I've it's seen. It's been a while. COVID kicked everything in the knees, and so we're bringing it all back. Everything's coming back in full force. And beyond. God is restoring what was torn down. It is pretty awesome. Man you can't look at what's going on right now. What God uh, has called. The increase and the growth is incredible. The amount of new leaders and teachers that are showing up in our children's ministries and things that are going on behind the scenes, pretty pretty cool stuff. If you're not getting involved now, you're definitely missing out, especially for 
what the future holds. Mm-hmm. I think getting involved now, <clears throat> you know, now more than ever. The, right the best now. time is always now. Whenever you're watching this, now is the best time. Now, that's a great word. Now is the only thing we've really got. You've got right now. Um, we're working on the land. They're doing the survey study right now. A little interesting development on that. A friend of mine who lives in North Carolina contacted me. I sent you the text mm-hmm. the other day. They contacted me from North Carolina and said that God put it on their heart to start financially supporting the purchase of the land. And I was like, that's how God does things because we haven't actively gone out yet and started doing no. all that that and all rolling all that out. We've got some video stuff that we're preparing. But for people that are just hearing it in their spirit and saying, God wants me to just join with you guys, I was telling you, we've got friends, thank God, uh, all over the world, all over the nation, that uh, through several years of cultivating relationships, you guys have been friends with us for a while. You know that the work that God is doing here is fantastic. You know that the future is looking real good with you guys in leadership. And so it's pretty exciting. You always say... Uh, you're only one connection away from blowing up or whatever. And (laughs) I've heard, not that I endorse her by any means, so don't clip this up for YouTube. (laughs) But I heard apparently there's like some some concept or theory or something on the internet that you're only seven people away from Beyonce. Uh, It was the most random thing I saw. (laughs) But it's like there's apparently you're only seven people away from knowing. And when I heard it, I thought I'm hoping I'm about eight or nine. (laughs) No, we got to get close to get them saved, man. We got to we got to save them as lost as What is it? My in my day it was the 6 degrees of separation from Kevin Bacon. That was, was that where, a thing? You Kevin haven't heard Bacon? of that? No. 6 degrees of separation from loose. Kevin Bacon. They showed how you are 6 connections away from Kevin Bacon. Now it's Beyonce. So it's probably uh, the world is it's so small that I mean really, <laughs> you know, I guarantee you literally could say something like this, and it could hit the internet and go, and somebody who has her phone number could call her and say, you need to talk to that guy. Let's do it. And Beyonce, say, call up Family Church. Hook Jared up. Talk to Let's, him. I don't know about me. Maybe like my wife or something. Her and what's her husband's name? Jay-Z? Jay-Z? Yeah. If, I don't you guys know. I need blanked to tithe, <laughs> Right? You guys need to tithe. You're billionaires. Oh, you my could, goodness. Just one stroke of a check could just... I feel the Lord. To change the world. You could change the world. But we are here to talk about Sunday. Even though. And even though we got off topic, we're now going to bring it back onto topic. Do you Yet like that? We will get back on topic. So, how Last did you feel? Sunday, that was a, a word that just birthed out of conversations that I've been having with people. Um, and a lot of people that I'm talking to that are more than I've ever heard in, in a long time are seriously asking questions and all good questions about what's going on in the world, faith, religion, God, people that I've talked to, many of them like in the gym that found out who I am and now (laughs) on the daily are asking me questions about what's going on with this and what's happening with Israel and what's going on with Palestine and what about Russia and what about China? And, you know, it's a great opportunity to, to right now share the gospel. And so it just all kicked around, and, and I started out in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, if you, if you weren't here, 17 and 18, where Habakkuk is having this prayer conversation with God, and, and he enumerates six failures in a row. Even though this happened, and that happened, and this is not working, and that's not working, and that, he said, yet I will praise the Lord. And so I put together a word on that to just I want to stop you there, because I know you're big on biblical numerology. Yes, sir. And you, like, hit it in a fleeting pass on uh, the number six and then the representation of man. You want to dive in any more on that? Six is the number of incompletion. Uh, if it, It's the representational number of man. On the sixth day, God created man. And we've always been kind of an incomplete. We are incomplete without God. Seven, of course, is God's number, the number of completion, perfection. So six is that number of incompletion. So as you're studying, you're looking through your Bible, or you see something, and the number six comes up, you should always pay attention to that because it represents that something is incomplete. I started, uh, when I was looking for the Gideon sermon, I was looking, I started like a little, I didn't dive too much into it, but on the numbers and all that, and which I, I'm always, I'm a sucker for uh, like rabbit holes and, and things yep. like that. So I love, you hit it and I was like, man, you should have stayed right there because, you know, it's six, the number of man and then how we failed at the mm-hmm. beginning and he lists six failures and... Mm-hmm. A guy hit me later that night. Uh, I won't tell you his name, but his last name is Posey. He uh, contacted me that night, and he had a list of 
several things that were all about sixes that were happening in his life right now. And he was like, dude, what is God trying to tell me? And I'm like, he's obviously trying to show you something. Be alert. Stay alert. I hope he showed you. If he did, let us know. Yeah, there's definitely, it's interesting how God gets your attention uh, Mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. Everything in life is how you see whatever it is that you are looking at. So when I looked at that whole story, starting in chapter 1, Habakkuk started out saying, this is a mess. It's all bad. We cry out to you for help. You send none. Justice is falling in the street. Um, Wicked people surround us. Judgment has been forgotten. He just laid it all out. And by the time he came to the third chapter was where he finally began to understand and he began to give a, this, this statement here that even though all of this is going on, yet I will trust him. The third chapter? The third chapter. There's another thing there with like threes. And Three represents resurrection. Resurrection. And it's, uh, you know, that's what I was going to say. Something important happened on after three days. And on so the third day. Interesting that the, the change comes on the, uh, the third chapter. Mm-hmm. I just love stuff like that. Any little details. I brought Dad's Bible with me Sunday. That was cool. I teared up when you brought it up. Oh, well, well, me too back in the <laughs> I have One of the, the prized possessions that I've got, I've got Dad's Bible and I've got Mom's Bible. Um, and from time to time, and you may do this after I'm dead and gone, but from time to time, um, when I'm preaching something that's pretty strong or pretty heavy, I'll bring that one because it, it kind of gives me a reminder that, you know, He's the one that laid that groundwork. He's the one that gave me that foundation. Uh, His notes are all over that Bible, and I haven't moved a thing inside of it since he passed away. Uh, But I'll pull it out, and I'll bring it out, and it gives me a little bit of extra to go when when something like that pretty heavy is coming on. But I talked about how we can open the Bible and look at the world that we're in and make it make sense. Matthew chapter 24. You try to make it make sense. Huh? I said you could try to make it make sense, but without the Bible, I mean, I don't think it is going to make sense. Right. But we it's have, just, as believers, we have the word that we can open it up and look at it and go, oh, okay, oh, this is right here. Yeah. All of this mess, the wars, the rumors of wars, earthquakes, famines, plagues, pestilences, the beginning of sorrows, the great falling away, the love of many waxing cold. I didn't touch any of that. Welcome to the family room. But that, that falling away, when we see believers that lose their fire and lose their focus, uh, it's all prophesied. You know, don't, if there's any pastors watching, don't lose your zeal over it all because it's going to happen. It's been prophesied. And That's then, one thing I don't get too when people think that the Bible is boring or right. that the Bible is like when they like some of those <laughs> some of the people that get mad at the um, more modern pastors and, you know, people like that, that kind of make it, you know, they, they, they give you the text and they give you the background and then they dive into scripture, but then they make it relatable and I don't understand anybody that like hates on that. Right. And I'm not, you know, obviously the Bible is not about us, but if you can't see yourself mm-hmm. in the people that are in it and you can't relate to it, then you're never going to really, I don't think, let it get kind of in your heart. Right. And obviously, yes, the whole Bible is about Jesus and it all points to Jesus. And it's one story with the thread running from the beginning of Genesis down to Revelation, even before that and after that, when we're all in eternity, it all points to Jesus. But it's not, I don't, I don't understand like the, the super just dry passers that treat it like it's just a history book and you just get up there and you're not, there's anything wrong with exegeting scripture and, you know, breaking it down. Mm-hmm. But when you don't make it relatable at all and you don't make it, uh, you know, you don't give it a, a place where people can see how they can relate to it and how Jesus relates to them and how he wants to touch them and reach them and and have a relationship with them. I mean, like, you know, who are you really speaking to? And I saw, I saw a great comment on it earlier, actually, that someone mentioned, um, how all like the prophets and everybody in the Bible, they all did the same thing in their day. They made it relatable to their people in their culture Mm -hmm. with their own stories. You look at the parables of Jesus and it all spoke to people of that Mm -hmm. time and of that culture. And, you know, when we look at nowadays and you've got all these number of Christians that are, you know, oh, why can't we just preach the gospel? And what they're really saying is, why can't you preach the gospel how I want you to preach the gospel? You know, that's, they, they don't mind if you're preaching how they want you to preach, but as soon as you try to make it relatable or, you know, give it life because it's the 
living and breathing word of God, mm-hmm. all of a sudden they get <clears throat> their underwear all in a wad. I was, and I was brought up in that church. All you modern preachers trying to make everything relevant. Well, what is the opposite of relevant? Irrelevant. What is the last thing you want to do? Talk about something that's irrelevant. Exactly. Because people click. They turn you off and they're not going to listen. The Bible is the most relatable, relevant, living, right now word that we have. That we have. He said it is, it is alive and it is active right now. That's why I love the way Mark Driscoll says it when he says it's, it's what has happened and what is always happening. And that mm-hmm. ties back into what you were saying, how you can look at the book of Habakkuk and everything that was happening mm-hmm. then and relate it to today. Happening right now. And one of the strongest points that I made um, in this was about the rise again of the Babylonian Empire, the Babylonian, the spirit of Babylon. Um, I didn't know how people were going to respond to that. I don't know uh, if anybody, uh, since we're doing this recorded, can they, they can make comments. So they, they're, yeah. they're probably spilling into the comments right <laughs> Chewing now. Chewing us apart right now. <laughs> and we could just, uh, you can make a comment. Make a comment on it. the rise of the spirit of Babylon, that, that spirit of the age that we're currently seeing that's all about manipulation and control, uh, tyranny and injustice and oppression, all of that. We're witnessing that spirit rise up once again. And, and you hit it Sunday. It's, you, that's how you can tell it's the spirit of Babylon. And with it being the spirit, because times have changed, but demons don't. Demons haven't. So mm-hmm. it, the spirit of Babylon, you know, you look in the Bible and you read the stories and you're like, how did they get this depraved? How did things mm-hmm. get this dark? How did things get this disgusting and depressing? And how did they get this far from God? How was the child sacrifice this open? Right. How was the... Uh, the cults with prostitution, you know, this open and just everything so blatant and open and in your face. And it's like you look at now and just the way the culture is where things are just getting more in your face yep. and more open and more accepted. And it's what well, you used to say it all the time, what you ignore, you accept. Mm-hmm. And I think too many people, especially Christians right now, heads up, have had their head in the sand for too long because they've been wanting to be wrapped up in the church building mm-hmm. and, and afraid of getting canceled and afraid of offending people Keep and talking. afraid of hurting feelings. And we've seriously, Christians, we've got to get back to proclaiming the word of God. We've got to be, we've got to be bold. The righteous are as bold as a lion and the wicked flee. Amen. I don't understand why we come in the building and we want to act like we get fed. And then as soon as we get out of the building, we just, Jesus disappears from everything in us until next Sunday, and we're spiritually starving, Mm -hmm. but we have the just, uh, how has it been said, that there's so much information at our fingertips. Your nonstop news, 24 hours Mm -hmm. a day information. You can look up anything at any time, and ignorance and complacency and Mm -hmm. idiocracy has never been more prevalent than it is now. You can look anything up on the internet, Mm -hmm. but everybody refuses to. You can just read the headline and make your own detailed opinion from that and run with it. And it's just, we have got to get back to proclaiming. There is a lost world out there there that is dying each and every single day. Somebody right now, as we're recording this and as it is playing, there are people dying and going to hell. And it is a a shame Shame. that Christians are not more proactively renouncing sin and calling it out out of love not not the mm-hmm. not the typical church hurt christians that you know show up and oh you're all going to hell you're going to hell you're going to hell and you're going to hell that's not your call to make that's not my call to make that's not your call to make obviously been. we know sin leads to hell sin leads to your death it's going to lead it, it's going to lead to you being in hell but that's if you're actively living in sin if you're not covered by the blood of jesus and it's just it amazes me how we're so worried about Mm -hmm. feelings instead Mm -hmm. of focusing on faith and where people's eternity stand. And, you know, that's why I love when Furtick said, man can't cancel what God has called. And if if God's hand is over it, nothing can come against you. Mm -hmm. Nothing can come against what God has put his hand on, what he's put his blessing on, what he has called you to do. It doesn't matter what comes against you. God is going to get you through it. He's going to see you through it. And I just, we've seriously got to get back to boldly proclaiming the faith in the word of God instead of keeping it in a building. I mean, there's people that are hungry and it's statistics show when I was in uh, the whatever last semester of school that uh, even with the big falling away of church, 
a lot of people are looking to return. They just look mm -hmm. for someone to ask. Mm -hmm. They're just looking for someone to ask. Mm -hmm. And then you see it. You see it on the comments. And there might even be a comment right now that we can't even see where people just, they get so triggered and hurt that they, they just have to come in and bash you. We've seen it all over my reels. You have like nothing. So you need to get more mean apparently or, <laughs> <laughs> or get more open about whatever you're supporting apparently. Uh, I don't know if I could get any more open Sunday. <laughs> but I just it's just ridiculous to me. We have got to seriously get back to we have God on our side. I mean, if if God is for us, who could be against us? I think that's one of the reasons why our church is, is growing as it is right now and has the blessing and the favor on it that we do. There are miracles happening here happening here constantly, outreaches and growth that should not be happening. Uh, and I believe it's because of that. Uh, the days of blending in are over. Um, there is, like I said Sunday, there's almost no neutrality. There is either light or there is darkness. And people are making choices based on that. You are either going into the darkness or you're going into the light. There's very little gray area. And I think truly as a church, that's one of the reasons why we are being blessed as we are. We're, we're not interested in blending in. We're interested in speaking the truth and standing out. And I, I believe there are people that come here every Sunday that it's like an oasis to them when they find it. There was a gentleman here Sunday from Michigan. Yeah, I remember you telling me about I, that. I met him after service. I, his name was Joe. He was in town. They were in town for a little while. And he came up to me afterwards. And, you know, you never know what somebody that you don't know wants to say to you. He said, I want to say something about your sermon because I touched on a lot of hot <laughs> topics. And he said, I just wanted to say thank you for speaking the truth. He said, I'm from Michigan and we have this and this and this going on. And he said, it's very rare to find a place where people will actually speak the truth without a filter. Yeah, there's so many people hungry for it. I mean, you look at the past several years, we've had nothing but lies and we continue to have nothing but lies. Right. But I think without mentioning uh, the plague... So, you know, we don't get kicked off of YouTube. Um, I think, and I'm not going to say, don't call me a conspiracy theorist or what, you know what, I don't even care if you do. I don't think, obviously, it was God ordained or anything. Obviously, he knew about it because he What, the enemy knows. means for evil. But what well, the devil meant for evil, God meant for good. And I think he used that to shut a lot of doors to mm -hmm. false gut. Now, I'm not, obviously, there still is false gospel. Mm -hmm. That's just the nature of... But there are the thousands world. and thousands of churches that did not make it through. Exactly. And I think God shut a lot of doors that needed to be shut, and the doors that need to be open were allowed to remain open, and now they're getting more blessed. And you see, I mean, you see it, like you mm -hmm. just mentioned. As soon as you start preaching the truth, people are digging more into it. Right. And it's almost... People get here you early expect, to get a parking place. You expect when you hit a topic of sin or a topic of sexual immorality or mm -hmm. a topic of addiction and bondage and drugs mm -hmm. and pornography, you expect to be like, eh, because you think you're just going to get the backlash. But it's like as soon as you actually start mm -hmm. calling it out in the right way, right. you know, there's not hope. beating people over it and mm -hmm. showing them that there's hope and that the blood covers you, not that you can remain in it and you're not meant to remain in it. But when you speak the truth, and especially the truth in love, even with yeah. passion— then people are, they're just pressing directly into that. And they're not afraid of what that entails. We're hungry for truth. And it's just, I think it's so funny. It's funny to me when you watch the videos of like the street preachers and they go to the uh, mm -hmm. pride events and things like that. And I've watched a couple and there's one guy that's phenomenal. I don't, uh, Nicholas Bowling, I think his name is. Mm -hmm. The dude has clearly got uh, the Holy Spirit's presence of patience on him because <laughs> I do not have what that man has mm -hmm. for the amount of patience. But he is, I mean, he's completely biblically sound and he's just apologetics to the max. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it, it, to me, it's hilarious that these people <laughs> that don't don't believe in it will sit there and scream and want to argue it with them. But to me, and the same thing like with the comments on Facebook and YouTube, if I see something <laughs> that upsets me, which is rare, or if I'm like, wow, this is stupid, or okay, that's really dumb, and that kind of makes me mad how dumb that is, I just go, oh, Scroll. okay, on to the next thing. Not because you're an adult. Yeah, and <laughs> but it's like these people... I'm going to change the word. You say triggered. I'm going to say convicted. That's a better word. I'm going to say convicted. We need to mm -hmm. change the culture in the Christian church from saying, you know, it's triggering to it's convicting. 
Because the Holy Spirit doesn't condemn you, it convict, he convicts you. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what a lot of it is, is they're getting convicted, triggered, and they'll sit there and they want to argue with it. But it's like at any point, you can move. You can walk away if you don't believe it and you're like, you know, bump Jesus mm-hmm. and, you know, it's all fake and it's the, it's the white man's European religion, even though it was in Africa before it was in Europe. Mm-hmm. You can at any point just get up and walk mm-hmm. away. But they stand there and listen because there's something in them that knows it's the truth there's and there's something in them that's hungry for that truth. Mm-hmm. And really, it's just the demons trying to get them to flee, but... Their spirit knows, and their spirit wants the water that God is offering. And they just stand there, and they listen to it. I watched one. It was so good. And I know we're getting off topic, but (laughs) even though we're off topic, we will get back on topic. I'm going to keep bringing that up. But there was one um, where it was like everybody's screaming, everybody's screaming, and then like he started really honing in on this one section of the gospel. I don't remember what it was, so I'm not even going to attempt to go there. But it was, like, so on point, and, like, everyone went silent. Like, it was like you could hear a pin drop Mm -hmm. for, like, five minutes. Everybody that was screaming, even the ones that were just arguing with him, and it was, like, just pure silence and letting him talk for five minutes. Mm -hmm. And, like, you go in the comments because I'm crazy, and I like reading the comments sometimes. Um and everybody was like, that was clearly like the Holy Spirit just putting the silence on everybody so they could hear what they needed. It was amazing to watch because, I mean, it was just loud, and then all of a sudden just nothing, and they just listened to him for several minutes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whether anything became of it for some of them or not, the seed was still planted. Mm -hmm. That's what I think is going on right now. I said it Sunday. It was a part of the message that now is a great time of restoration. People who had lost their faith are, are finding it again. Prodigals who got away from God, who walked and went back into the culture. Uh, they got blinded and they got confused. And they, they're they coming back. I'm seeing, we're seeing them by the thousands. Uh, you know, and it, people say, well, it's, a, you know, the day of the falling away. Yeah, there's a falling away, but I think there's a great reviving happening also among people. I do. I think there's, I think we're on the back. verge of the next great awakening. Yeah, and they're that's coming back be because like they found insane. that the world doesn't satisfy them, the Bible is true, God is real. Uh, it's all happening just as, you know, we hold the Bible up and say it's all happening just as the way the Word of God said it was going to happen. And they're starting to become convinced. And so they're turning back to God. And it's a great time of restoration right now, watching it happen. It is. I know there was the this falling away, because I did the studies on it. I think I brought it up in that one of the first sermons I did, where the numbers of this shift away from church was greater than all the Billy Graham crusades combined. Mm-hmm. But I do think, I think we're on mm-hmm. that next great awakening. I, I, I truly believe that it's coming and it's going to be, it's going to be biblical. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's going to be phenomenal. And that goes in with, you said Sunday that um, God is either compelling or repelling. Mm-hmm. And I, that was like the first thing that I wrote down. I didn't have my notebook, so I, I texted it to Kelsey. Everything that is happening in the world right now is either compelling or repelling. It's drawing people to their faith or it is pushing them away from it. It's what we see. You know, when people, uh, when we post something about God, they either approach it or they attack it. It's, it's either one or the other. They're, they're either being blessed or they're being broken. Uh, they're being reproved or they're being restored. It's, it's the way that Keep it's happening. I want to see how many you can do with the double... Oh, I can do that all night long. <laughs> but that's the way that it's happening. I mean, and it's like if you were the devil, wouldn't it be the most frustrating thing for you to constantly be doing something and then God just twists it and turns it around and people start suddenly seeing the light and they start seeing the truth and then they, they leave you standing there looking silly again. The, the prodigal woke up in the pig pen and he said, I remember that I always had it better even before. So... He turned around and went back home. And I, and I really believe that Sunday I asked about it, and there were a lot of people in the building. How many of you were prodigals that had a prodigal experience? And I was one of those that came back home and found the arms of the Father wide open. Somebody ought to do a sermon on the elder brother. Yeah, I talked about that last week, so thanks. He started going. I was like, shh, <laughs> stop. <laughs> no, um, that's the plan for Sunday, so we'll see what happens. Come on. Um, oh, what was it? Oh, no, how you said the, the devil, it's got to be frustrating. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, at some point, because he knows the Bible better than we do, mm-hmm. because he's had so much time to study mm-hmm. it. And what amazes me is just he was there in heaven with God, so he knows all the beauty, mm-hmm. the beauty, the glory, 
And it's just astounding. It all goes pride. Obviously, pride is why he fell, because he wanted to be God. And pride, because I was going to say, man, you, you think he'd just give up at this point, because you know you're going to lose. You already know He's your outcome. It's written down. Uh, you already know that um, you're going to lose. You're going to spend eternity in hell for your sin. And so it's like at some point, you know, you think you just give up, but pride won't, because he wants to drive everyone down there with him, because misery loves He's company. He's never going to stop. And it, it's just astounding. And it's that made me think of, too, just I don't know how, but um, of the rainbow and how you think of the cross is the symbol that we most associate with God. It's the easiest symbol to associate mm-hmm. with God. You see a cross and you know what it is. And the rainbow now has been hijacked and you associate it with the world. Mm-hmm. And you associate it with, well, just, you know, with Satan because it's, Satan is the ruler Immorality. of this world. And so... That's just how the rainbow is, but it's in, I think, Revelation 4, where it talks about what's around the throne and all the colors, and it's like, it's a rainbow. Mm -hmm. So he knows that the rainbow is literally around Jesus' throne, and that's why I think he hijacked the rainbow for his Mm -hmm. symbol, and not even that it's just a symbol of God's promise, but just that it's literally around the throne of Jesus, so that's Satan mocking God, because that's all he ever wants to do, but it's just... He counterfeits. Yeah, he Amen. counterfeits what, what God creates. One of the most important things, and I don't have much more on this for myself for my, to pour in. Because uh, I've hijacked it and I've just... No, no, I enjoyed <laughs> the, the, the sermon itself, the delivery of it, the, the content of it was it was special to me. Uh, and I've had a lot of really substantive conversations with people afterwards that are privately contacting me about it. And uh, One of those sermons, it's one of those Sundays that you, you know you touched a little something. Uh, but one of the things that it addressed for me was Habakkuk's humanity and his personal experience with um, working out your faith, trying to figure this out. How do I maintain my faith when, you know, there's still a lot of evil going on around me and when all of these bad things are happening and people tell me God is good, but it's still bad. And how do I do that? And what was interesting to me is when I studied the book and I, and I mentioned it, that Habakkuk was like one of the most unprofit prophets in the Old Testament because he did not address the people directly. He did not rebuke them for their sin. He didn't deliver one message from God to them, which is what prophets do. All of this book, Habakkuk 1, 2, and 3, is a conversation vertical between a man and his God. And, you know, sometimes you have to have, I truly believe you have to have those seasons in your life where you just forget everything horizontal and you go vertical. I need to, you know, the old saints used to say, I need to have a little talk with Jesus. And those little God conversations, those come to Jesus meetings, they can change everything. But I see that in Habakkuk. Habakkuk just turned straight to God and he had a question and God gave an answer. He had a question and God gave an answer. And so I said that there, in in, in my final, my beginnings and then my ending, was that there are three main themes in the book. Number one was hope for the future. One of the things that people desperately want you can't live without is hope. You have to have hope. Uh, you won't even get out of bed. You'll, you'll, you'll end your life if you don't have hope. You have to have hope for the future. And, you know, I don't know if you're listening, watching, somebody needs to hear that, but you always have hope for the future. Somebody needs to tell you the sun will come out tomorrow. No matter how bad it is, it can't stay bad forever. Things will turn around. It will get better. Uh, the, 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 the tide will turn. It will change. Don't, don't give up. Secondly, faith in the faith of Faith in the face of chaos. Uh, 62 years old. I've never seen the world more chaotic than I have right now. And I lived through the 68 riots, the Vietnam War. Uh, I lived through all of that mess, the Oklahoma City bombing, Waco, Texas. Uh, I've seen so much that just makes no sense. But I don't think I've ever seen the world more chaotic than I see it right now. The only big one I can think of um, was 9-11. Yep. And I was in fifth grade. Mm-hmm. I remember they, <laughs> I don't know why, but we had a substitute teacher that day. And I'm pretty sure she brought in, had them bring in one of the TVs yeah, that yeah, was yeah. like on so the watch carts. It. And she was watching. I don't know why I she did that for a bunch of fifth graders. sitting there watching that. 3,000 Americans died. Well, I don't even remember that. I just remember the news. I don't remember much of all that. And you look at that and how long that war was. But now it's just... Chaotic. It's just chaos. That's a good word. It's chaotic. chaos. It's confusion. Mm-hmm. There's just clearly an attack on Riding identity. In the streets, people against one another. 
people running up behind somebody and just punching them in the face. I mean, stealing, walking into stores and just stealing whatever they want to steal, defunding the police, child sex crimes and trafficking and everything, the immorality that goes along with all, it's chaos. But there you can have faith and even in the face of your chaos because you have faith in God. Because of the third element, the last element is that the justice of God. I can live every day of my life with joy knowing that, that God will take all the wrong things and he will make them right. Y'all are experiencing a little bit of that right now. Mm-hmm. I am. It's, it's awesome. And I love, too, because all that ties in with him, Habakkuk, having his conversation with God. And obviously, mm-hmm. when all your problems are horizontal, there's no other direction to go other than hor- or, uh, vertical. Go vertical. You got to take it straight to God and not focus on anything that's going around you. And... Uh, it's 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 funny too just to bring it back into how the bible is what always happens you know you look at the israelites and they when they got led out of egypt and they literally had all the miracles that they saw god do and then they're walking around with a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day having the presence of god and right having there. all of your needs met and they still were like oh we're gonna try to go this way and forget him and every time they forgot him and it got nasty just like it is today they remembered mm-hmm. who their maker was they remembered who had their promise and they called back out to god and then he restores them and mm-hmm. and i think that's what's happening now is god has removed his hand and his protection and his blessing so we can see Okay, this is what happens when you try to do it without me. And then when we finally crawl crawl, well, yeah, crawl back to him and call back out to him, he goes, okay, boop, and he restores everything. Yeah. And I, that's I, we're, we are on the edge of something great. I don't mm-hmm. think, I think we're in the end times, but I don't think we're at like the end yet because there still has to be the big falling away. But all the momentum that I'm seeing is a shift towards a, a falling on our face at his feet and coming back to t- Eh, back to him. Easy for you to say. Repentance. <laughs> Repenting and turning back to God. Um, so for somebody, uh, you know, I don't know. You, who We don't know who's going to be watching this, who will see it later. But if you're in that trying time, if you're in the testing time, and you're, you know, you're at the point of maybe giving up, losing hope, losing faith, hold on. Just trust in the Lord with all of your heart. It's not a cliche. It's a, the Word of God. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your path. You can have hope for the future. You can have faith in the face of chaos. And you will see God's justice come through. He will turn it around. He will do it because he's promised that he will do it. He's just searching and seeking around the world to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is perfect toward him. If you'll just give him your all, give him your heart, give him your life, turn to God, trust him. Man, he, when he finds somebody that walks by faith, he just opens heaven and heaven comes down where you are and i'm truly i believe it's going to happen it's that's happen like you know i i sent y'all um i got that message from that guy that had you yeah. know lost his mom and and fell away grew up in church lost his mom to cancer uh he said she died with a bible in her hands and you know he got involved with drugs but you look at that situation and what is by today's standards, a recipe for the majority of people to be angry at God Mm -hmm. and to fall away and want nothing to do with church. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's cool that he has, it's somehow he found us. I have no idea who he is. I don't even know where he lives, but he Mm -hmm. found our our page Mm -hmm. and got touched by God through just watching our videos. And instead of what the enemy meant for evil, God meant for good. Mm-hmm. And he's sitting here, you know, wanting to press in. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the thing with whatever you're facing, if you're not dead, he's not done. And, you know, I don't want to sound like I don't have feelings for people that are down and out and have suicidal thoughts or tendencies. Um, you know, obviously, seek help, talk to somebody. Mm-hmm. There's There's still light at the end of the tunnel. There's still a reason for you being here. But when... You, when you lose hope and you think nothing is left, I think that's when the demons are just knocking at your door, and that's the reason why they're wanting you to kill yourself because they know that God has a plan for you and God has more in store for you. But if they can get you to end your life because of, uh, for lack of a better term, impatience on waiting for it to get better, then you're never going to see it get better, and they're just wanting to win 
something else on their side and steal something from God. But, you know, like you said, it, all you have to do is wait and trust in him and call on him. Mm-hmm. And as, you know, as Christian, Christianly cliche as that sounds, and nobody really wants to hear about waiting on the Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, now what Kelsey and I are seeing, you, you, you can definitely see when you truly hand it over to God and trust in Him and just lay it all at His feet and let it play out by the process that He wants it to play out and let Him do His thing, you will see His glory. It he might will take get His a while. glory. It might take seven years. Like I, t- like I talked about in my sermon yeah, seven years for, for Gideon and their <laughs> oppression. Uh, you know, they, the jeweler puts the black velvet out for the diamonds to shine the brightest when you go to look at it. So you've got to have the contrast of the dark and the light. I saw, um, I think it was Megan Hagen on Facebook. She posted something today thinking she was listening to a podcast and was thinking about, uh, you know, how, how there's evil in the world. And a lot of people, you know, oh, there's evil. So God is, God's not there. He's not good. He's an evil God. You know, it doesn't exist, Mm -hmm. whatever. And it's, and and it's really true that if there was no evil, we would have no reason to want to know God or find God. And it's, it's in our suffering that we find our Savior, who also suffered for us, and He knows our suffering, and He came and suffered down for us so that we can know Him, so that He can relate to us. I'll give you it's a sermon. This is thing. This is a gift. The two <laughs> ways that the devil does it, uh, and they're so completely opposite of one another, but it is diabolical in its perfection. Either, number one, he will do everything he can to beat you to death, throw everything at you and like a flood, just beat you, beat you, beat you, or give you everything. And so if he gives you everything, you don't need God. You've said it many times. You just don't operate needing God. So you live this cold, cliche life. If you're beat to death, you say, well, there is no God. He doesn't care. So I'm just going to die and go to hell anyway. So it's a diabolically perfect way that he does it. So God so loved the world that he gave his son to die on the cross for us to take our place God gave the ultimate sacrifice. The devil has never done anything like that. No, and he never will. Never will. He Coming never up will. Sunday. Coming Talk up about Sunday. It. Uh, it's St. Patrick's Day, whatever uh-huh. that all means, because um, I don't know anything about I don't about know what that. that means yeah. either. Other than, you know, that's what most Americans use as their excuse to go out and get really drunk. <laughs> but that's about, that's about all I know about it. But um, Sunday, we're going to be, uh, I think I'm going to talk about the prodigal son. Um, okay. But in a different light than most people expect, because most people, when they hear prodigals, and like you touched on Sunday, they only think of the younger brother and uh, how he ran away and came back. But um, I'm going to do something else with it. All right. And I'm not going to say, because I know right now, as soon as I said that, there's going to be some Christian like, oh, he's trying to put something extra in the Bible that's not no. there and act like he's got information that no one else has ever had. That's not what I said at all. But, you know, if you want to clip it up and throw it on, we'll take the extra publicity. Let's go. So we can preach the gospel. The to following people. Sunday is Palm Sunday. We're entering into that holy season. So encourage you guys to get back to church, get into church. Don't miss, don't miss. The Sunday that you miss would be the one that you needed to be at. Uh, watching online, our online family, we're glad to have you guys there. But uh, And we reached thousands of people at a distance. We're glad to be able to do that. But if you live in the city, if you live anywhere near enough, I know people that drive drive. 45 minutes to get here. And I've heard of people driving eight hours or more to go to other churches. So if you're within a reasonable distance, I'm not going to say, you know, if you want to visit us from eight hours away, that's awesome. But if you're like, you know, an hour or two away, uh, you know, God will feed you. Get a feeling. Um, And whether you want to plug in here or plug in somewhere else, that's, we are, you look at it on our website. It is not all about us. It's about Jesus. As long as you're in a biblically correct and sound teaching church, have at it. Yeah, if you Uh, don't like it here, we'll help find somewhere where you do. But we've got, we've got Sunday coming up and then Palm Sunday. And, you know, make sure you're inviting people, sharing the word, spreading the word, invite them for Easter. Two services on Easter. We've got the two services on Easter, 9 a.m. and 11. Uh, The 9 a.m. is the one with uh, all the child care stuff. And the 11 is just going to have all the families in here. And, um, you know, it's an exciting time. I'm supposed to hear back this week on some of the upgrades that we're looking forward to in the building, which would be nice. Excellent. We're supposed to hear within the next two or three weeks about 
They talk the land surveyed study and all that kind of stuff. So good time. A lot of good stuff going it's on. It's a fun time. And your giving matters. It is making it all happen. Amen. Thank you for your Everything. giving. Everything. Yes, definitely. Consistent, sustained, ongoing giving matters. This is one of the churches where you can go and you can see your giving at work. Exactly. Uh, our food pantry, 40,000 pounds of food last Thursday. And that night we all went to Dining with Dignity, served about 80 homeless people that night. You can see your giving at work. So thank you for your giving. Keep That's it up. awesome. All right. And uh, even though we went over the time, it's now come to... I had to get one more in. It has now come to a close. We will, we will see you Sunday. Come ready. Ready. And uh, just, you know, come early and be awake because you already... You, you got one bad day of uh, <laughs> sleeping in, but now you don't get any more excuses. So we will see you Sunday. We love you. Have a good rest of the week. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's message. If you did, make sure that you share and subscribe so that we can get you these sermons as soon as they are available. I'd like to take a moment and thank everyone that's a part of the family. Whether you serve with us or give financially, it's because of you that we are able to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus. If you have any questions or would like to get more involved, click the link in the description. Thank you. Have a blessed week.